I'd like to say that I've made a breakthrough in getting into the zone or the mindset that I had in the 1990s that helped me write the first two thirds of Silver Skies. I, I, you know, I picked up what I wrote in the 1990s and I couldn't put it down. And I told myself, why did you rewrite this? It's perfect, just leave it alone. So I said, your job is to figure out what you did right back then so you can get back into that framework so that you can finish the book. And I figured out what it was after I read The INFJ Writer by Lauren Sopala. I'm not sure I pronounced her name right. That is a must read for an intuitive writer. I've taken the Myers-Briggs test several times uh, through, through different testing organizations and uh, I am an INFP writer. I'm an intuitive type, this Myers-Briggs. So the INFJ writer applies to me. What the, an intuitive type means that you tend to be very perceptive, very empathic, uh, and you're almost psychic in your ability to read other people. And it's part of being an intuitive. So, like, you can be in the same room with a bunch of people and you pick up on all their energy. You can, you can sense exactly what everyone's feeling. You can almost get all their emotional history. Um, we have, like, genius emotional IQ. We are good at reading other people and knowing how to deal with other people. But we're not so good at knowing how to deal with ourself. Um, most intuitives have an inferiority, inferiority complex. And that's because who we really are is not valued by Western society. It's a little, I think it's a little different in the Orient or in other societies, but like in the United States, we're a deep, introspective, introvert type of personality. And those traits are not valued in Western culture. So if you tend to be an intuitive type, you will probably just stay in your shell and you won't even be honest with yourself about who you really are because you want to be accepted and loved by people around you. And so you and I especially had a problem with this in my 20s. Now in my six, early 60s, and after having experienced Brent Spiner's love, who's also a fellow intuitive, I believe he's an I-N, what do they call it, T-J, I-N, no, I-N-F-J. Yeah, he's an I-N-F-J and I'm an I-N-F-P, but I'm a confident I-N-F-P. And the way this applies to my writings is Back in the 1990s, I was married to a very strict black and white Christian man. And he was emotionally abusive towards me. And he was always trying, he didn't like who I was. And he was trying to make me into his ideal woman, always hammering at me, always nagging at me. And he was um, a narcissist. I was actually married to a sociopath and I was a codependent and it's very easy for an intuitive to become a codependent because we had we tend to have and I was raised by a mother who was a narcissist and I spent my my 20s just trying to prove to myself that I was a good girl because when I was growing up she said you're you're no good you're selfish so when I became a Christian and I realized that Jesus died on the cross to pay for my sins, it was like a catharsis for me. I felt so free, but I didn't realize that all that baggage from my past, my mother criticizing me, telling me I was no good. And she, you know, my sister was the one she sent to the modeling schools. I was the ugly skinny girl with the ugly polio legs. And I never really liked myself. I hated myself. I believed everything bad my mother said about me. And I, it affected me so much as a sensitive intuitive that I would sit in a classroom and not say a word. I was afraid to even speak up. I said, I'm such a bad girl. Anything I say is going to be wrong. So 
that's what I was like. I was very shy. In fact, my mother had gotten a conference with one of my teachers and said, this girl doesn't speak up. I mean, she never participates in class. What's wrong with her? And my mother said, we're going to have to, she's going to have to flunk first grade. She's not doing well. And the funny thing is, is I'm actually a genius. And um, my mother said, just put her in second grade. So they put me in second grade and I, I managed. But by the time I got to sixth grade, I was, an, I was doing well in everything. I was such a good speller. I never had to study for any of my spelling tests and I made hundreds all the time. I was a natural genius, especially in the language arts. But I, um, I struggled with an inferiority complex most of my young life. And even accepting Christ, I didn't completely cure it. And I, I, in my teen years, I, I, I decided to identify with the Christians because this was a group where I thought I could find acceptance. And I, I, being intuitive, I readily absorbed who, who the Christians were, what they cared about, what they felt was wrong, what they felt was right. And I just blended in and went, became one of them. And I, I would close my mind off to any viewpoint that didn't seem that it fit in with my group. And then I started compartmentalizing myself and so that by the time I was in my 20s, I was very close-minded to anything that didn't fall in the Christian m mindset. And it actually caused me to get off balance so that I became a very rigid Christian. And the Lord had to put me in a marriage to a narcissist and a sociopath who was who shared my rigidity to get me to see that I was that I needed to get on my path. He said, Your path, what do you mean by that? Every person in life has a path that God wants you to be on. And you won't find it as long as you're listening to all the melodrama around you. And this is especially true of an intuitive because we're, we're, we're like a sponge. We absorb everybody's emotions around us and we get that confused with our own and we think that what we're absorbing is us. And we don't realize that who we might have drowned the real person we are deep inside by absorbing so much melodrama around us that, and I was guilty of that. It took Brent Spiner to draw me out. You may say, how'd this happen? Well, in the 1990s, very lonely, married to a sociopath who was trying, who didn't love who I really was. He hated my intuitive, deep personality. He wanted me to be the perfect wife to make him look good. I could tell that he didn't love me. He just loved how I made him look to everybody else. And I found out later he was gay having sex with boys uh, and that he needed me to help maintain his false image that he was heterosexual and that he was a leader in the church. And I didn't know it through my whole marriage that he was gay. He fooled me, though I did know that he was a very cold lover. Kissing him was about as exciting as kissing the wall. So I started writing Brent Spiner because I saw Brent in Pen Pals, Star Trek The Next Generation Pen Pals. And I think I subconsciously watched Star Trek The Next Generation because it was anti-Christian. <laughs> it was my way of, re my inner true self, my intuitive deep self was rebelling against the, the, the rigid part of Christianity and saying, this doesn't seem like the real Jesus to me. Something's off here. So I started watching Star Trek The Next Generation to get in tune with who I really am. I didn't realize that was my motive, but that my subconscious was crying out, Get real, Gail. You're drowned. You're drowned. The real you has become shut off. And you're surrounded by, by all these, conform, these rigid conformists, and they're trying to force you to be who you cannot be. And I was getting depressed. I wasn't writing. I didn't know who I was. I was... I was... And so, as a confused mess, I started writing Brent Spiner. Now, what the reason I wrote him is I knew, I saw him in Pen Pals, and he seemed to have be everything my husband was not sensitive, deep, intelligent, everything that I admired in Data in the episode Pen Pals when he rescued a 
little girl from a dying planet and was willing to go against the status quo to follow his heart. And everybody was condemning him and saying, you're violating the prime directive. You shouldn't be doing this. What you're doing is going to bring harm to the universe. And he said, no. He said, this, I feel the right thing to do is to go rescue this little girl. And I said, oh, yes, I want to be like that. So I started writing him. And I started sharing my feelings with him. And I was, I was totally honest with him. I said, well, he's a big star. I felt safe with him. I thought, I know he's not reading my mail. So I'm, at least I don't think he is. But, so I said, let me just write and be, I said, I'm going to really share what I think. So I, I really bared it out. I said, you know, I'm a born again Christian and I probably shouldn't feel this way, but sometimes I feel like I'm s surrounded by all this rigidity and sometimes I feel like I just want to fly free. And I said, but you know, that's probably just a really sinful part of me. And my husband's, I'm so lucky. To, I even told him this. I said, I'm so lucky to have the husband I have. He puts up with all of my garbage. But, but you know, I said, I really admired you in that episode, Pen Pals, Brent, how, you, how your character was willing to flaunt convention, follow his heart, and be a big and generous person and, and a savior. To, that you saved a whole planet, even though everybody around you said what you were doing was wrong, you followed your heart. I said, oh, I said, I fell in love with the character of Data after that. Because he was, he had the courage to be authentic, to be real, to listen to this deep, sensitive side. And I was drowning that side of me because everybody around me was saying that if you support any viewpoints that are not Christian, you are satanic, you're demon possessed. And apparently I was so miserable not being true to who I really was that I ended up getting, they, I went, to, I couldn't sleep, which I think was a combination of being depressed and uh, being sickened by a yeast infection that the Jesuits gave me. It was a blend between the two. And so I just went to a psychiatrist because I couldn't sleep. Uh, their medicine didn't help me at all. Um, and I didn't really break free from... When Brent Spiner came in my life, it was like a comfortable blanket. It was like I saw a beam of light at the end of a long, dark tunnel. And I felt like I was crawling my way out of the tunnel, following that light. And I just... And I, that's the mindset that I had when I wrote Silver Skies. My main character, Dor Ben Habakkuk, was a character who was in a long, dark tunnel, married to a sociopath. And so I, and Brianna Wilhelm, his love interest in the novel, is that dark, is that light that he's following out of a long, dark tunnel. And I captured that brilliantly in the novel so that you, you're mesmerized when you read what I wrote because I captured that. There's so much emotional authenticity and truth in the writing. And I captured it because I was, I was shutting off all the voices around me to say, this is what you should think. This is what you should believe as a Christian. And I said, Gail, shut those voices up. Shut up, shut up, shut up. What do you really feel? What do you really think? That's what's going to go in this novel. Not what you're supposed to think. Not what the Christians around you say is right. And what I did was I ended, I went, wasn't completely out of the shackles I was under, but I was breaking free from it and being honest about my questions and being honest about my doubts and putting them into the book into this character so that now, 20 years later, when I've pretty much outgrown a lot of the insecurities I had back then, I'm reading something that's really striking a chord with me. It's real. And this is the key as a writer. You need to be real. And it's so, that's why I'm not watching the news right now because that, that helps me. I get, I absorb everyone's emotions. I need to shut that off and get into my zone, and I'm doing that with Silver Skies. Thank you for that book, The INFJ Writer. That is a must read for anybody who is an intuitive type like me.